Welcome back to another edition of the Dev Blog. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look, as usual, at some of the new features that have been added, or content, I guess. This isn't really so much of a feature, I suppose. Um, but yeah, look at all these bright colors. We got greens, we got pinks, we got blues. Uh, we have grays, which I guess technically really aren't colors. Uh, so what all do we have? Well, let's take a look. There's aqua, there's black, there's blue, there's green, there's gray, there's orange, there's pink, there's red, there's violet, there's white, which also is not really a color, and there's yellow. And these all come in four variations, so I'm just going to grab one of each of the blues here for no reason other than they're the first ones in inventory, so... Kind of makes that pretty easy. And we'll start with the most basic of them. So, so yeah, we have uh, just a little bit of a textured pattern to it. Now, these can be made darker by punching them. And they can be made lighter by right-clicking. So, you can place them and then change the colors or you can place them change the color of one break it and then put them out and you will get them in the same color that they were they do show in inventory as you can see here darker than they actually place uh, and this is because if inventory showed them all as the palest colors well they'd all look fairly similar so i opted to choose like the middle ish color so it's a little more obvious what the differences are. Uh, so that's our plain one. Second up, we have a uh, just a solid node that's, I don't know, a block, I guess, is what they're normally considered. So you've got a tiled edge to it. There's also a brick variant available here. So uh, you can see that why yes indeed it looks like bricks and because i am making use of global textures here you can see that we have a very narrow brick and then we have a wide brick underneath it and they do vary so if i place a couple more of these out which um that does get tricky because shift clicking is required and i'm flying around you can see here that the the bricks vary in uh, in their texture, so that really breaks up repetition, which is nice. And then lastly, after the brick, there is um, what I have taken to calling a laminate. And this is, it's kind of similar to this one, but this one's more of a speckly pattern throughout. And this is more of a streaky pattern going crosswise um, so it would look good I have it as the grays here um, it would look good as say a stone material in a cave wall or something or it could be used as I don't know drywall inside of a house for interior walls um, you could use it as floors such as I have done here with the alternating dark and light grays to get like a what do they call that stuff um the composite floor tiles vinyl floor tiles uh composite vinyl something i think anyway whatever it's called you could do something like that um and yeah again all of these are you can change the colors by punching them or right clicking on them um, you have to have the area protection. So again, it's very important to protect your levels. That way people can't change your colors around. Um, because it just checks if you have access to the area. And if you do, it will let you change them. So please, please do protect your, your levels. Um, I forgot to show this. So if you leave these, or if you set them all to the same shades, the colors do match together very well. 
Um, basically, what this is, how this works, is there are four base textures. There's the speckly one, which is down on the bottom there. Uh, there's the block, there's the brick, and there's the streaks. And those textures stay the same for every single color here. And then these are all using hardware coloring. So there's four nodes for each color. And each of those nodes have eight shades, I believe. So there's pretty much just a image texture that's one pixel tall, eight pixels wide with the eight colors on it. And as you punch or right click, it cycles through them in either darker or lighter shades, depending on which one you're doing. Um, and yeah, there's this there's this one neat little feature that you can do. So if you set something up, we'll just use this as an example, um, but it could be built with anything, and you've done a color pattern on it, and you decide that you know I don't I don't think I like this. I think I want to go with the tiles. Um, we could change this to the tiles, so it would be color gray underscore black. So we'll just do world edit here. Set colors color rather color gray underscore block mm. okay what's the block called then oh blocks I see I see there we go and it has now changed all of the nodes but it doesn't change the param2 value, which is where the color is saved in. So we can do this. Or if we decide, you know, we don't want gray at all. We want this to be, oh, I don't know, red. We can do that. Or if we decide, you know what, the red's a little too red. Let's go with pink. Maybe that will be a little less red and a little more. Okay, that's looking a little violet-y. Well, let's see what violet would look like. Okay, okay, that's looking pretty purpley. Okay, well maybe we don't want that to be blocks anymore. We just want it to be the flat nodes that are kind of noisy. We can do that. Or I don't know, maybe we want this to be green bricks. We can do that as well. See, see how easy that is? Now obviously that only works um, for the colors. I suppose you could do it with anything else that has a param2 value set as well, and uh, and it would do that. But uh, but yeah, it really only works well with other colored nodes like these. Um, one, I, I don't know if I want to call it a caveat. Uh, you can't. I shouldn't say you can't. You can. You can use world edit to bulk place these but it will just place them at the lightest color variation. So like if I place them in this open space here, let's let's just go ahead and do that. So we have an open space here and we're just gonna go ahead and do green bricks, sure. It places all of them except ones that already have param2 values from surrounding nodes as the lightest color and then you have to go through and manually change the color on every single one to make it the color you want, which is admittedly, admittedly slightly annoying, but that seems just to be the way World Edit works. Um, I mean, I could maybe change it so that it would let you provide a param2 argument when you're placing the nodes, but yeah, I don't know. So it's kind of up in the air if it's faster to use world edit to place them in bulk and then manually change the colors yourself. Or if you're better off just placing one the right color, breaking it, and then placing the rest of them that color. I don't know which would be easier or faster. That's kind of up to you to make that decision. Um, the other thing, the only other thing that was added was more rubbish which uh, I can't really show you because I set it up so that in inventory there's only one piece of rubbish showing and then when you oh I can only carry one piece at a time yeah and then when you break them there is a random chance 
of them reappearing as currently four different items. There's this, whatever this is. There's a junk food wrapper, there's a post-it note, and there is a blue sock. <laughs> because why wouldn't people throw around blue socks as garbage, right? So there's that. And that's pretty much it. There's also, oops. There's also a couple little tiny bug fixes that were discovered during the stream this month. So those all have been pushed to the server. And um, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. If there's other textures, uh, I shouldn't say textures. Well, I guess textures too. If there's other colors that you would like to see available for the colored nodes here, uh, let me know. I tried to get a fairly good selection across the board. There's really not any browns, but I couldn't really find a good brown palette to use. So yeah, that's why there's not. Um, but that could be added, I suppose. And then um, we could get other base textures added as well. But I don't really know what else there would be. I feel like I did a pretty good job of covering like your basic textures here. You got the full blocks, you got the bricks, the streaky pattern, just the noisy pattern. I feel like that's pretty much anything you could want. But if there's some other base texture that maybe we should add, could definitely do it. It takes all of, well, it takes one line of code to add new colors. And then to do a new base texture, it's pretty much just a copy and paste and change the name of the base texture in four areas. So it's pretty simple to do. I think that's going to wrap this up. So thanks for watching. Check out the server. Try to crash it if you'd like. You can also, you know, download the game and play locally. But it's kind of a multiplayer game. I don't know I'm saying kind of. It definitely is a multiplayer game. It's very boring playing by yourself because there's really no... There's no point in playing other than building. But I don't know is that it's really that great for building at this point in time. But yeah, that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week for another video, and I will see you then.